that's my talk. Why are board games the perfect way to learn a new programming language? Uh, as all good talks, I'm going to talk a bit about me first, because obviously I'm the most important thing about this talk. Um, I, my name is Inger, I'm 37, I live in Oslo with my partner and all of our board games, obviously. Um, I didn't start my professional life as a programmer. I actually have a master's degree in mechanical engineering. I spent quite a few years uh, doing calculations of steel parts and their strength, and whether or not they could sustain whatever they were exposed to. Luckily, I did see the light in the end. <laughs> uh, I did understand that it was a back-end developer I was supposed to be. So I did some single-class courses in Kiltemner at UEO, the University of Oslo, and I managed to talk myself into a job at my current company. <laughs> um, this company is called Nua Ignite. We're a consultancy firm here in Oslo. Uh, and this being a consultancy company and my CV being what it was, basically, seven years of mechanical engineering, um, it took a while for me to get a customer project to work on. And I realized really, really quickly <laughs> that tutorials are really, really boring. <laughs> They're so very boring. <laughs> uh, and also, they don't actually teach you all that much. Uh, so, so what are you to do? What are you to do when you want to learn something new? and you have no idea how. Luckily, I have uh, friends who are also developers, and uh, lamenting my sorrow to a friend of mine, he was like, but I mean, that's easy. Just, you're a geek, do a board game. That's a perfect exercise. And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> but I was desperate, <laughs> and was like, this doesn't sound that promising, but how bad can it be? Um, so, that's what I did. So, and this is now five years ago, and I'm here today to hopefully convince all of you guys why board games are the perfect way to learn a new programming language. First of all, it's an actual thing. Like, it's a concrete thing with a set of rules that you can make. And I chose this really random, extremely magenta, now that I look at it in big size, uh, image from Unsplash on purpose, because the point isn't really what kind of a thing it is, but that it is a fi thing. Because one of the main issues I find when learning a new programming language is to decide on what to create. Because you don't know the language, you don't know the limitations, you don't know where to start. So you get stuck, at least I do, I get stuck in this continuous loop of, okay, but if I make this, but, but is, does that actually fit my thing, like the language I want to learn? Will I actually be able to learn something trying to do that, or will I just waste time? Whereas if you program a board game, you can just go, OK, uh, I need to learn this new language, or I want to learn it. Uh, which board games do I like? Uh, and what does it, like on this list of board games, what appeals to me right now to create? What, what's kind of tickling my fancy? Uh, for me, um, my absolute favorite board game of all time is called Pandemic. This was in the autumn of 2019. <laughs> Little did I know how ironic this would be. <laughs> um, Pandemic is a board game in which two to four players cooperate, trying to save the world from four different pandemics at the same time. Yes, it's an incredibly difficult board game. Yes, you do lose most of the times <laughs> that you play this game. <laughs> Um, different players have different roles, and the different roles have different abilities that help you uh, win the game. The pandemics themselves are represented by colored cubes, four different colors, four dip different cube colors. There are two types of decks of cards, the infection deck that dictates how the disease spreads, <laughs> and then the player deck that gives the players resources to travel around the world and create vaccines for these pandemics. Um, unless, of course, a local epidemic happens and everything goes, goes to shit. Um, my point is that a board game has a set set of rules and components, and how they interact are already specified. It's already fully specced. I think every single developer I know hates specification meetings and poker plannings and Christmas and T-shirt whatever you want to call it. It's the bane of our existence, right? 
we realize they are a necessity, but they're terrible. With programming a board game, you can just skip that sk step because you have the rule book. The rules are already written. The interactions between the components and the different types of rules and stuff that can happen in the board game is already decided, which means that you can spend all of your creative juices on deciding how to implement it, which is, after all, the fun part of programming, actually doing the thing. Uh, so it's all of the fun and none of the boring stuff. Um, I also find that programming an actual board game teaches you how to solve actual problems using the language you want to learn. Tutorials in general, I find they're either too simple, they assume too much pre-knowledge, pre is that a word? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, or they're way too specific. And also you end up like, you just follow steps, right? A tutorial is actually created for you to just follow a set of instructions and do all of the things and copy all of the lines and then paste them into your uh, whatever. And it just works. And you don't actually learn. You just learn to follow instructions. Whereas uh, if you have to program a board game, you will get bugs. You will have to bang your head against that brick wall of how the fuck do I solve this problem? How the hell do I implement this interaction between this thing that I programmed this way and this thing that I programmed this other way and I did not think about this interaction? It actually forces you to think and create. And I think that's part of the value, at least for me as a developer, I get to learn new stuff all of the time. That's one of the reasons why I love being a developer. And programming board games allows you to do that instead of just watching boring tutorials. And you also get to start small. I believe with Pandemic, I started with the board itself, which is just a set of cities, and each city has a color and a name. Fairly simple. Even for a tiny baby developer, that's in most languages, that will be OK to implement. And then you can expand. You can ex expand the system, you can create players, you can create decks, you can create, like I said, Pandemic has two different decks of cards. So I got to implement inheritance, you know, like I had a, an abstract class called deck, and then I had the infection deck, and I, I had a lot of fun with this, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, in addition, um, board games, as a programming problem, are extremely adaptable. The rules are set, but how you implement them is very, very flexible. And I think most of us, when we want to learn a new language, yes, we want to learn new languages, but we also have, we all have stuff we want to learn, stuff we want to explore that we haven't gotten to explore yet. And with board games, it's quite easy to turn that board game application into an exercise for whatever you want to learn. You want to get better at microservices? OK, then split your board game into tiny, ridiculously tiny, tiny, tiny components that have to talk to each other. And then you discover all of the problems with microservices. And like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, do you want to learn GraphQL because you've only ever worked with REST APIs? Well, then make a game status class or whatever in your language and create an API that can request the status of the game. And voila, you have a GraphQL API that you can uh, play around with. You want to learn cloud storage? OK, pop some, user, some fake user data into a storage account. Mind the cost. Um, I, think, I think most of us have gotten burned at some point. Uh, do you want to get experience creating front-end applications? Well, make a web app for your board game. Like the, the possibilities are endless. And it's only your creativity that kind of sets the limit to what you can actually achieve using a board game. Uh, I remember I spent, I think, almost an entire day Googling how to shuffle a deck of cards programmat programmatically. And spoiler alert, it's a lot more complex than you think it is. To actually get it random, I used something called, the, I think it's called the Knuth algorithm. Like, it has its own name. It's amazing. And it was fantastic. Uh, you can also, I also dream about programming a die using that lava lamp uh, randomized thing they have. Is it in Australia? I can't remember. 
There's an API for a lava lamp randomizer, which is just fantastic. I love programming so much. <laughs> um, and last but not least, I've been talking extremely fast because I thought I had not enough time. That's fun. It's fun. Uh, tutorials are boring. I heard your groans. You all agree tutorials are boring. And we don't learn when we're not having fun. Um, when you get to choose what you want to program yourself, it be it a board game, a card game, whatever, something with set rules, choosing something that actually gives you energy makes your you have much more fun, so you learn more, and it makes your stamina stronger, like you're able to keep going. I was on the bench, I believe it was like five months from I started my job till I actually got a customer prog uh, project. That's rough if all you're doing is watching tutorials, right? So just do it, create a board game. Um, since I've been going through this at super speed, I'm going to show you my pandemic, which is kind of terrifying because I did this five years ago, mind you. So please don't judge me too harshly for, the for whatever is on the screen. I haven't looked at this in ages. Can anyone see anything? No. Well, I can't. Now I can see something. OK. So this is my, uh, I work in C Sharp. I'm kind of a language agnostic. C Sharp is the language I chose because that's what my company uses mostly. Um, and here you can see, can I see? I should duplicate my screen. So here you have it in all its glory, the card I was talking about, an abstract class, just names and colors, and a constructor. If you're trying to play a card without actually having implemented the play, how that specific card is being played, an legal move exception is thrown. And then you have a city card, they aren't playable, which is why it doesn't have a play implementation, or why it should throw an exception if you uh, try to play it. Uh, and the infection card. This is how the disease spread. It's terrifying. Um, and you can see that I've had to implement a method called infect, because it, in it infects a city with disease. And just this is what happens. I also have in the bottom, and I've done this for all of it, like roles, there are different roles. I have the cities hard-coded here somewhere. Uh, I wonder if I can find the shuffle thing. Here, Fisher Yates Knuth Shuffle. <laughs> I used the boring old randomizer of C Sharp, so, though, so I still have improvement uh, possibilities for this thing removes at the specific place and adds uh, somewhere else. I have a uh, game manager here somewhere, there I believe, and this is what actually runs the game. I've hard-coded the users. Ragnar Rackverk and Frida Frosk. Ah, some people actually know who they are. That's funny. Um, and it's just a while loop that tries to play the game until an exception is thrown. If you win the game, can I actually go there? You get the, oh my god, how did you do that? Congratulations, the world lives to die slowly by global warming instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you lose the game, which is the most common occurrence, you get, the world is dead. <laughs> I'm so sorry, the world just died. <laughs> yeah. And this is just because I uh, this wasn't a hundred percent of my job. I didn't do uh, I did other stuff as well. I have no front end for this, but I do have this beautiful console application, which also imagine as a baby developer how much satisfaction this gave me. Actually, having a console app up and running and having a b an interface. Let's do this the introductory way, and then you get. I wrote this whole text of welcome to pandemic. This is what you can do. These are your players. Uh, the following cities are infected with disease. Like this is useless in a console application. You actually need a front end to, to actually play the game. But it's still fun to see that it's there, that it updates appropriately, like that all of the elements actually work. So you have all of the moves you can do. And I can 
move my character from, let's say I want to use number two, direct flight, uh, which I can do by using the cards I have in my hand, which is down here. So I can either fly to Bo Bogota or I can use an airlift. So I can click to and I can apparently only airlift. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm blaming the, the demo ghost for that one. But airlift allows me to move to any city I want to. So then I get a list of cities. I can use number three and Voila, I'm in Lima, I believe I went to. Yeah, so that also part of the fun of programming a board game is that you get to do this. And you, this is a board game, like I said, it's my absolute favorite board game, so I know this really well. I've played Pandemic shit tons. So, but, but also, <laughs> while developing, that was actually incredibly practical because I saw the bugs, I knew how to test, like you get rid of a lot of that uncertainty that you get when you're trying to learn a new language of just like, but is, it, is this a me problem or is this a language problem? Did I just misunderstand the rules or, or is this kind of like a finicky weird thing about this specific language? Uh, and when you know the board game, it kind of helps a lot with that uncertainty and debugging and understanding what kind of bug you're dealing with and how to solve it. So I cannot recommend that enough. I'm going to close this down. Uh, and show you my last slide, which is this one. I have a QR code if you want to give me some feedback. I love feedback. Um, if not, thank you so much for your attention. Any questions?